Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Heart Slayers. You're here with the Heart Slayers, Derek Costa and Meg Turner. Today, we're going to be taking calls, answering emails, solving everybody's situations out there. So without any further ado, let's get to it. This is Heart Slayers. Okay, everybody, we're going to get right into it with an email. This first email comes from somebody who goes by the name Melon. Collie. Ooh. And it reads, Hey, so to get straight into it, I have a friend that is a girl that I've known for well over 14 years. We dated once and it did not work out. This was when we were in high school and I broke up with her. So we just ended up being close friends. Over the years, I developed strong feelings for her and had been trying to date her again more seriously. However, due to things like me being in a relationship or that she was, it never came to fruition. Until recently, where we started to hang out more often and it started to become romantic. And this most recent weekend ended up with us kissing. However, the one issue I have is that she is very much poly or in an open relationship type of person. She is very sexual, so she very much enjoys her encounters with people. Sometimes they can be small things like kinky fetish things to almost swinger level of sexual encounters, which I'm assuming is the highest level <laughs> highest tier. You, that you can attain <laughs> swinger status level. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which is something that I know she would not want to stop because she did not stop that in previous relationships. I'm a very monogamous type of person, so I feel like I'm not going to be okay with this, but I love her a lot, and I have had these feelings for her for years, and now this is finally happening, so a part of me wants to be open about it, as I try to be open to new ideas, uh, but this is a huge leap for me. So, should I stop this now before it ends in a possible disaster or me being jealous, or maybe I should just take this as an opportunity to explore life and see where it goes? Thanks, melancholy. Okay. So to recap, been in love with this girl for 14 years, dated her in high school. Now they finally hooked up, but he knows that she is polyamorous Mm -hmm. and is probably not going to give that up to be with him. What should he do? Well. Yeah, what's your take on this? Um, that's a little tough, I think, because obviously if you're a jealous type, it's not gonna feel great Uh uh-huh you know um but at the same time it kind of seems like they're maybe thinking that it could be worth trying out and i'm always in the mindset where it doesn't really hurt to try i mean maybe feel it out at first or just really give it a good think over you know Um, my take on this is melon you seem to be in tune with your own feelings, right? Yeah. This person seems to be very upfront. Like, I don't feel comfortable dating somebody who is uh, polyamorous, who's in an open relationship. Kinda I want them all to myself. <laughs> kind of seems like you got the answer right there. Basically is what I'm thinking. You know how you're going to feel about this situation. My advice to you is if you're going to move forward with this, don't expect this girl to change for you. No. Don't expect that, you know, just because I love her so much, she's going to feel the same way about me. You know, just because I want to be with her only doesn't mean that she's only going to want to be with me. Right. And it doesn't seem like they think that she's going to change anyway. Yeah, but, (laughs) you know, guys go into these messed up (laughs) situations and they're thinking, well, you know what? Let's just see what happens because I'm going to love her so much. She's probably going to want to be monogamous with me. Okay cut that crap out man that yeah don't go there that's not gonna happen no. what i say is if you want to pursue this relationship just be aware of what you're getting into she's probably not going to stop hooking up with other guys right. and that probably is going to make you jealous i would try my hardest to not get too emotionally invested yeah like i always say on the show keep it fun Keep it light and easy, and maybe you'll really enjoy the relationship. 
but you yourself will um, not be in an open relationship. But Right, just not seeing other people, but she's still off doing her own thing. Yeah, and I feel like nowadays, too, uh, kids these days, they got this thing <laughs> where it's like, um, you know, I went on a date with a girl and we kissed, so we're steady. <laughs> it's me and her. We're in a relationship oh, now. And I feel like, you know, back in the day, uh, the whole concept of dating was, you know, you spend a little time with this person, you go on a date with this person, maybe we make out, kiss, whatever. Yeah. Now I'm going on a date with this person. Right. Next week I have a date with that person. I don't really like any of them <laughs> that much, but right. they're, you know, I'm dating. Yeah. And then you, you find the person that you really want to be with and then you can kind of, you know, go steady. Yeah. Have that one-on-one -on -one relationship. You guys have been hanging out, you've just kissed, and now you're having all of these ideas about like, well, she's into multiple people and I'm into just one relationship. You're I, reading too much into it, Yeah, maybe. I feel like you're putting the cart before the horse. Yeah. Um, you know what, just enjoy dating this girl, getting to know her, and take, take it as it comes. You know, she's probably going to see other people. Maybe you should too, and, and I don't think you should, change who you are, make this a chronic thing. But all I'm saying is just don't jump into one steady relationship. Yeah. You know, see how it develops. I wouldn't put all my eggs in this basket uh, because it sounds like a situation that is not going to be conducive to your personality. It's, yeah. It sounds like it's going to make you jealous. Yeah. sounds like it's going to make you upset. Yeah. Uh, think of it as a gamble. Yeah. It's a toss of the dice. Might come up six. Might come up one, <laughs> or you might get a three. You know, when you're playing a game of chance, you don't get so like, oh my God, if I don't win, then, I'm, then my life is ruined. You yeah. know, it's more of like a, hey, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe, you know, easy come, easy go. That should be your approach to this situation. Yeah. Hope for the best, but don't get too emotionally invested <laughs> in it. No. Um, Anything else to add to that? That's it. Good luck. Yeah, let us know how it all works out. Thank you for the email. Good luck. Okay, everybody. We are back here on the phone with John. John, you are here talking to the Heart Slayers. Derek and Meg, what's up? Hey. Just want to say I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank uh, you. Of both Heart Slayers and Megazine 4. Nice. Always good to hear. Um, the main thing I wanted to ask was... Um, I guess, like, how do you deal with jealousy? Um, it's not really quite a relationship issue. It's really more like, um, kind of like seeing other people that you know, like, succeed in stuff that they love to do and having a hard time dealing with, like, like, I wish I could do that kind of thing. Oh. Like, kind of speaking selfishly. Okay. So this uh, isn't even, like, the romantic type of jealousy. <laughs> this is, like, Just uh... Like envy. Kind of. Yeah, just seeing other people succeed just pisses you off sometimes. <laughs> is, that, like, is that basically it? Especially for my friends, like, I'm super happy for all of them. But yeah, there's like, I feel bad being like, oh, I wish. wish Can you happy. give us give us some more details about your situation? What What do you feel like is not going well in your life that you see other people and they have it and you want it? Um... Well, for now, um, I have a, a major in information technology. Okay. And um, just like everyone keeps saying, like, oh, like that's that's an easy field. You can get any job that you want with that with that field. And even now, it's like it's been a year, and still like having a hard time finding a job. And like, I kind of picked it. So like, I do like computers, but also like I love filmmaking but it's been kind of hard doing that at the same time as like job hunting and like in the middle of job hunting it's i'm um, also having a hard time being like pursuing my arts too so like a lot of people i know like moved to la and like um i'm creating stuff that they like doing and um yeah stuff like that and or even just like people like finding like jobs like right away it's like, I don't know how that's, that keeps happening because I like apply for so many and still no bite. Is there do. anything um, specifically that happened recently that made you feel jealous about one of your friends or somebody you knew? Um, hmm. 
trying to think of something. It's just really more just like everyone posting like, oh, excited to start my new my new job today. When like a week ago, I heard them like started job hunting. Oh, oh okay, later. okay, okay. Yeah. I think I see the situation here. <laughs> Um, you know, there's so many things I I I want to say about this topic, and it's kind of like, where do you start? Yeah, exactly. You know, first off, can I ask you um, how old you are, if you don't mind? I'm 23. Okay. All right. Okay. It's a good age. It's a solid age. <laughs> you know, okay, so here's the way I feel about just what you said is like, I see people posting all their success stories online. I call bullshit whenever I see somebody posting success stories online because yeah. post a sad story every once in a while. I dare you. <laughs> they never do it. If somebody was like, um, you know, my life is so fucked up. I'm going through all this hard shit and you know, nothing's going right. And then like a week later, it's like, Hey, uh, turn around in my life. Something good actually happened. Yeah. I'd be really happy for them, Yeah. but it never happens. It's always like, Oh, I did this. It was so great. Oh, this was um, something else I did that was so great. Wow, look at this delicious meal I had. And I just feel like yeah. you're trying to construct this whole, like you're you're lying to yourself more than you're lying to everybody else. You're trying to present this whole facade of success. I was going to say, people embellish a lot online too. Yeah, because people just want to look good. Yeah. And even before the internet, uh, people would do that. Mm -hmm. I feel like you hear about, you know, people... Uh, you know, like keeping up with the Joneses. They're yeah. always like improving their yard, trying to show off how much money they have, how well they're doing. Yeah. You, you, they never give you any insight into what they're really feeling right. or what's going wrong in their life. And everybody has that stuff happening to them at, at all times. Uh -huh. So I feel like it's important to remember that. Yeah. I, you're still like young and I know that the job thing, like the job market's shitty everywhere. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry about like, who is and who isn't getting a job. Yeah. I like don't compare yourself to other people. I know it's hard not to, but you are the product of your own success. Yeah. And I'll give you a few reasons. I agree with Meg. Don't compare yourself to other people. And uh I will give you a few reasons why. First off, um what what's the best first reason? <laughs> okay, first of all, other people's success does not impact your success whatsoever. And right. that's something to really important to remember. If other people are being successful, that doesn't mean you're not successful. Just like in the same way when other people's failures don't mean that you're a failure. Yeah. You're not tied to what other people are doing. Yeah. So whatever's going on in their life works for them, may not necessarily work for you. Mm -hmm. Even though it appears to be the thing that you want and they have it, I guarantee you that the circumstances that they went through to get it are not your circumstances. So it kind of just doesn't apply. Right. Second of all, I totally get where you're coming from because I have felt the same way. Look, yeah. I make I make YouTube videos and Mega64 <laughs> is successful enough and I'm really grateful for all the success we have, but I see all of these other people out there way more successful than we are yeah. bigger fan base more money more exposure more fame less talent like, well yeah i was gonna say less talent less time spent yeah and, and less time spent because we've been doing this for like 15 years and it makes it used to make me so angry and jealous i just be like i'd get mad at them i'd get mad at society i'd get mad at a society <laughs> that puts them on a platform or a pedestal over mega 64. Yeah. Um, but then I realized, you know, I saw all these people blowing up and then I'd follow them for a few years and they would disappear and mega 64 kind of didn't blow up. But at the same time, we didn't disappear and I would see it happen again. Here's this guy. Wow. He got really famous here today, gone tomorrow. And I realized, and this is what I tell myself when I get these feelings of jealousy, I hope this helps you or anybody else watching out there. And I believe this is true. A star is born every day, every single day, and not just one, hundreds or even thousands of people who were nobody yeah. yesterday are suddenly somebody. They've got their big break. A star is born every day. Today it's them. Yesterday it was them. Tomorrow it will be somebody else. The day after that it might be you. Mm -hmm. You never know. A lot of it has to do with luck, uh -huh. and a lot of it has to do with the people you know and the friends oh, that you yeah. have. And very little of it 
comes down to talent and what you're able to accomplish. Exactly. Talent helps and talent is important in doing good work. But when it comes to getting your big break or having your big breakthrough, a lot of it comes down to luck mm -hmm. and who you know. Yeah. So I would recommend uh, instead of focusing on what they have or what they don't have, just focus on being a good friend and, and, and expanding your social network and making people really like you as a person so that when an opportunity arrives, they think of you. Yeah. You're the cool guy who is not a problem starter, who gets along with everybody, who has this certain skill set that they're aware of. Mm -hmm. They and, could think, oh, hey, he's still looking for a job. Let me extend this offer to him. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so, you know, that's the third thing I want to say is when you do get jealous, the best thing you can do is kind of just position yourself as best you can to be there when the next opportunity arrives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, I always say, like, work on yourself. Just keep yourself motivated. Yeah. And just keep going instead of letting the jealousy kind of consume you because that's a really bad feeling. Uh -huh. But I think as long as you keep striving to be your best self and keeping motivated and all that. Yeah, and you are only 23, yeah. which feels very old uh, when, when you are that you age, because yeah. I was 23, and I felt like, man, I'm coming to the end of my life here. <laughs> like, wh where's my big break happening? But as you get older, you know, time goes on. You know, I thought Mega64 would blow up when I was 20. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. I thought, you know, <laughs> we'll get a TV show when I'm 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm in my 30s now. I've gone yeah. through all of my 20s, and I, I really thought we would be world famous yeah. by this time, but it hasn't happened yet. But I continue <laughs> on, and I look at other people who have found success later on in life. People like um, Steve Carell yeah. didn't become famous till he was in his 40s. Uh, J.K. Rowling didn't become a, a published author till you know later in her life. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of success stories that come way later in life. So just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, if you get so jealous that you quit, that you give up your dreams, that you say, it happened for them, it didn't happen for me, it's never going to happen, then you are officially a failure. <laughs> but every day that you're still doing what you want to be doing, you're a success. Mm -hmm. And you may not be at the levels of success you're at, but I guarantee you there are other people who are jealous of you, who look at how far you've come, and maybe you even feel like you haven't come very far. Maybe you're just, I don't know, I don't know what your situation is, if you're in school, if you're graduated. Maybe you're just a student, but there's other people who wish they were a student and they have all these things stopping them from getting to where you are. Money problems, family problems. Yeah. I promise you there's people who were <laughs> jealous of you. So there's this whole spectrum. You're here, there's people over here way more successful. There's people over here- Less successful. Less successful, <laughs> so you know. It's a, it's a personal struggle. It, you're, you're playing the game against yourself. Block everybody else out and, uh, you know, just do what, what you can do. What do you think about all that? I know that's a lot of information and advice, but does that kind of like tap on the, the subject here? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's like stuff that a lot of people have told me, but it's like, I just need to keep it in mind. Um, I just kind of want to hear from you guys because I know you guys always talk about that pretty often we're like oh why does like pewdiepie have like this many subscribers when he's only been around for three years yeah. but i don't know something that's really special with you guys being around for like 15 years and still have this like fan base that's been around that entire time i feel like yeah, yeah. still they're still kicking it like all these people like i've been listening um i don't know like since i was in high school so i was like nice you know what uh two I am, this is a problem I have. I'm an inherent, inherently negative person. <laughs> so I, I see the bad side of everything. And I'm trying as I get older to not have that, to be positive because there's a good side to everything too. Like Mega64 is super successful. Like you said, we have all these fans that have stuck with us for so many years. But I still can't help but see everything that's wrong yeah. and everything that we haven't accomplished yet. And that's the kind of person that I am. And I struggle with that. I do get very jealous of other people. Uh, it's a competitive thing. I yeah. just, I feel very competitive. Honestly, I feel like it's Mega64 versus all entertainment. <laughs> yeah. We're going up against Rooster Teeth. We're taking on fucking Warner Brothers yeah. and The Rock, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> people could go watch a movie. 
They can go watch the new Star Wars or they can watch a Mega 64 video. That's the field of play, oh my in my God. opinion. So there's a lot of times where I feel like we are not up to snuff. We are not kicking ass. And we got to work harder. Oh, man. Uh, but I try to, you know, whenever I have that feeling, the best thing that I can do to get rid of it is to work hard on whatever my project is. Yeah. You know, there's always something that I could be working on creatively. And, yeah. and if I feel like I'm jealous or if I'm not where I need to be successfully, it's because uh, I haven't made that super smash hit project yet and so i just go work on it yeah just channel your jealousy into like a cool project yeah so you're not alone in feeling that way and you know there's a lot of film directors that i look up to like stanley kubrick uh akira kurosawa and in interviews they kind of have the same attitude of being really negative towards their own work that's just that that's just a common thing that's just life that create <laughs> creative people especially kind of have that feeling of like is this good enough? How does this shape up against what everybody else is doing? So you're not alone in that feeling. Yeah. Um, but other people have gone through it. You can go through it too. And I think the last thing I'll say to you, John, and I know this is a long call, so I'm sorry if this is information <laughs> overload. This is all great. Uh, if there's somebody out there who has what you want, find out what they did to get it and do that thing. Yeah. You say you have friends that move to LA and are pursuing these uh, careers and you're a little bit jealous of them. Well, maybe you should do what they did and move to LA and pursue a career. And I feel like that applies to any field out there. If there's somebody that you can look to and you say, I want what they have, then look at their history, yeah. look at their timeline and find out what they did to get to that place and, and do it. Mm -hmm. I feel like anything is replicatable, you know? Yeah. They've kind of laid down the groundwork and so you can very quickly catch up to where they are. And then you'll be in a scary place where, okay, now I have what they have. Where do I go from here? Yeah, and you have to figure now? it out for yourself. But that's a whole different issue. <laughs> we'll handle that in another call. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my advice to you. What do you make of all that? Um, yeah, I definitely need to like keep in mind that, you know, a lot of times on social media, people just like, like to overblow things. Or, yeah, only, like, comment on their successes, no matter how big or small. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, like, I, I, it's hard to keep in mind. Like, yeah, like, even for successful people, like, everyone's suffering. Like, everyone's even having a hard time being happy with their work. Um, so, yeah, I just got to keep that in mind that I need to just, like, kind of block all that out. <laughs> yeah, there's this culture of, like, mandatory kind of positivity yeah. that I kind of don't like because I like real talk i want to yeah. know i like to to know the failures and the struggles it just makes things more satisfying to me i agree uh you know when people post about their creative successes they they never talk about how hard it was or the things that went wrong and no being a creative person i know that there's a lot of struggle in getting something out especially yeah. something that's good it's it's a lot of hard work yeah. so you know people don't like to talk about that but don't ever forget that's the truth of the matter <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you for the call. That was a really interesting topic, and I feel like a lot of people out there can probably relate to you. So Definitely. really appreciate it. I hope the information we gave helps you out. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else? I just wanted to thank you guys. Like, I don't, like, I, it's definitely a hard question to ask because it sounds like I'm being super bitter. But it doesn't, I feel though. Like a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people would be lying if they said they don't feel jealous at some point in their lives. So, like, I do appreciate you guys like taking the call. Oh Thanks. yeah, no, I really appreciate it. I'm it's a I'm a super topic. successful guy, and I still get jealous every day yeah. of people who are more successful. I don't think that feeling's ever gonna go away. So you're gonna have to learn to kind of like compartmentalize I said, it, channel it, into yeah, something else. Because you're always gonna feel this competitive edge. Uh, I promise you that. <laughs> well, thank you. Sure, no problem. Thanks for the call, John. Take it easy. Yep. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. All right, everybody, we are back here on the phone. This time we are talking to Dave. Dave, you were here with Derek and Meg, the Heart Slayers. What's up? Oh, hey, guys. Um, so about a month, month and a half ago, I have this girl who I've been friends with for a long time who just broke up with her boyfriend uh, after being together for like four years. Okay. Um, so she was pretty emotional about it, talked to me a lot about it, uh, felt kind of foolish for staying in for so long because he was like pretty abusive but she never told anyone about it oh 
Um, so since then we've like uh, talked a lot, hung out a bit. Sometimes just her and I. Sometimes group of friends. Um, and like I, I like this girl, and I think she might like me too. But I'm not too sure what to do. <laughs> like I feel like I should maybe say something, but I don't want to say something too soon. Or just, but maybe not too late as well. I don't know. Okay. Right. How long has it been since she's been broken up? Um, like just over a month. Okay. Ooh. That's, Recently that's broken very up. Very recent. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Um. Is there any more uh, any more information you can give us? Um. She. I know she has friends who thinks that maybe that guy might want to get back together. Maybe I. I don't know. But oh. and I know she definitely doesn't want to. That's good. Or she, or how old that, is uh? How old are you guys? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, we're both like mid 20s okay i just always like to know the context <laughs> we're talking you Are you look you like a, yeah you like... could be a young guy <laughs> never know mid 20s so uh she dated her boyfriend for four years they just broke up a month ago i usually uh i think that emotionally it takes at least a, well roughly half the time that, that you were in the relationship to get yeah. over it so if you were dated for a year take six months if you dated for four years, it's probably going to take, you know, couple of years. a couple of years before she's <laughs> fully detached <laughs> emotionally from this last relationship. Now, I'm not True. saying it's going to take two years for her to date somebody or get into a new relationship, but she's probably going to be emotionally connected to her ex-boyfriend, comparing the new guy to the last guy or you know, stuff in the new relationship will remind her of the old relationship just because it was so recent that she got out of it. Right. And especially because if it was like some sort of like abusive situation. Yeah. That's a really tough thing to kind of deal with, especially a month after breaking up. So. But that doesn't seem to be Dave's question no, yeah. or concern. Right. Basically, what what is your question? <laughs> <laughs> I know what the um, question is. I know what the question is too, but <laughs> okay. I want to hear his specific okay. phrasing of the question. Okay. I'm just wondering, should I, I don't know, mention something to her or like when should I mention something to her like that I like her or something along those lines? <laughs> I think you don't need to mention it. She probably knows already. She's probably picking up on those vibes. Yeah, if you guys are hanging out alone consistently, have you guys hung out on a Saturday night or a Friday night by yourselves? Um, yeah, just I think one time, yeah. Okay, well that's date night. So that's kind of like a date. And I'm not saying like if you hang out with a girl on a Friday or Saturday night, it's yeah. a date. But if she's single and you're single and you kind of have a crush on her, it's a good indication that things are going well. Yeah, because you're not out on a date with somebody else. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. She could be calling her ex-boyfriend on Friday night, crying on the phone. She's not doing that. She's hanging out with yeah. you, the new guy, well, it's the cool guy. Well, it's definitely a good sign that she doesn't want to get back together with her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. I think that if you continue to just hang out and be cool and be fun and show her a good time, yeah. you won't need to sit her down and say, I like you. She will. Things will happen. Things will happen. You'll be coming down the boardwalk with two ice creams and she'll <laughs> just grab you and kiss you. Uh, that seems to be the way things go. You know, uh, people, I, okay, I think that two single people, it's very hard for them to hang out a lot just by themselves and not develop feelings for each other. Right. It's kind of like a situation of why not? You're attractive. I'm attractive. I'm not spending my time with anybody else. You know, yeah. people start to uh, develop feelings for the people that they spend time with. So as long as you don't give her a reason to like shy away from you, I think you should be good. Yeah. I think sure. if you just kind of, like we always say, keep it really casual and yeah. just keep hanging out and having like a good time together. I think whatever is already there, if she feels the same way, it'll just continue to develop. Yeah, because I think that if you sit her down for the talk. That's a little intimidating. Yeah, then that, that would be a reason for her to shy away from you because then she'll start thinking like, oh, 
I just got out of this relationship I was in for four years. I don't want to be in another relationship. Yeah, you know, like if she's not ready for that, like she'll let you know if the feelings are there. She'll let you know, like if she wants to date you. Basically. Yeah. And also, sure. and and maybe this isn't doesn't make me sound good. Maybe this is not great advice, but Here sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, and Meg can back me up on this. Okay. Sometimes a girl just wants to make out with a guy and she doesn't want to be in a relationship with that guy. And right now, you are poised to be <laughs> that guy. When yeah. when the inevitable I just want to have a make out sesh moment comes, you're in position to be the guy. Yeah. <laughs> but if you tell her, I think I might be having, you know, developing feelings for you, suddenly she's gonna think. Well, when I want to make out with a guy and I don't want to date him, it's not going to be Dave because Dave has feelings for me and that might lead him on. Yeah. You know, so you're kind of walking this balancing, this tightrope balancing act where, yeah. you know, you want to be there, you want to be flirty, you want to be open to anything that happens, but don't try to force it. Don't try to push it through because yeah. then it's going to change the dynamic there. Mm -hmm. You know? I always feel like having the serious, like, I want to be your girlfriend or boyfriend, like, conversations kind of make people shy away. Yeah. Usually, like, you start kind of flirting with people and then you eventually start dating and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we're together. I feel like you can ha – it's only good to have that conversation after you guys have hooked up. Yeah. And, like – spent the night together yeah, it, and now it's like well it's consistent yeah and you've like hooked up a couple of times yeah, and then i wouldn't even say after the first time sh there you go <laughs> knowledge dropped on you from the female perspective i mean that's that's my opinion other girls you know what differently. i'm never gonna ask a girl to be my girlfriend after the first time ever again thanks Fair meg enough. No, but if you guys are hooking up, you're being romantic, and it actually you objectively feel like there is some confusion about are we dating, aren't we dating, yeah. if you can legitimately objectively feel that way, mm -hmm. then it's okay to have that conversation. Oh, absolutely. Because obviously this girl likes you. Mm -hmm. And and some things need to be cleared up. But if you guys if if you really think about it and and they're if it can be interpreted as there's no confusion, then you shouldn't have that conversation. Right. If and I don't friends know if I, think that you're dating, then it's time to be like, hey, what's really going on here? But I think if maybe everybody's like, oh, yeah, I don't even. Friends. This is, we're going to give him some cloudy, oh, no. confusing information. <laughs> oh, no, Dave, no you're going to have to sift through this because I'm going to, conf we're conflicting with each other here. Okay. I don't even think, even if your friends think you're dating. Yeah. Well, if you know we're not dating, then you're not dating. If it legitimately comes to the point where you're like, I don't know if I'm dating this girl because we spend almost every day together and she sleeps at my house every night and we make out and we but hold like, yeah, hands. No, ab absolutely. <laughs> Once it comes to that point, that's when I'm saying have the conversation. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. I if, agree with you. If your friends are like, ooh, what's up with you two? No, they, I, I don't mean like that. Your friends are in, they're clouding your judgment. Yeah, well, there's always going to be friends sure. like that. So completely disregard that. Yeah. So let's, uh, there's a lot of information just to recap. <laughs> this girl is probably not ready for a new relationship as it stands right now. If she was, it would probably be with you. Maybe she might just want some affection and somebody right. to keep her company, but she doesn't want a new relationship again, as it stands, that guy is you <laughs> not a bad place to be. I would just have fun with whatever is going on between you guys. See where it goes. If it starts turning into a situation that is very romantic and you guys are hooking up and, and all that, then I would have the conversation of, hey, what's going on between us? Yeah. What do you think about all that? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense for sure. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much just laid it all out for you. Hit it from every angle. Um, well, I hope that that helps you and, uh, you know, feel free to give us a call back yeah. if, if it, if there's more developments, keep us in the loop. Yeah, for sure. All right. Awesome. Well, Dave, appreciate the call. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks so much for answering. Okay. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. See ya. Hey everybody. We are back here on the phone with Stevie B. Stevie, you're calling us all the way from the UK. <laughs> 
Okay. What time is it where you are? It's uh, like 6.45 p.m. 6.45 p.m. All right. Wow. We're 10.45 a.m. over here. Nice. Giving some people an idea about time zones. <laughs> wow. All right. Enough about that. You're here with Derek and Meg, the Heart Slayers. What's up? So um, recently uh, in this group of friends of mine, uh, I met this one person who from like the instant that I met him is very tactile, very touchy-feely, you know, like on the day that I met him, it was like at some uh, party at some guy's flat. He's like rubbing my tummy. He's like lying on me and I'm like, okay, like, okay, whatever. Uh, very odd behavior. <laughs> Okay. I'm like yeah. the complete opposite. I'm like the complete opposite of that. It's like stay away from me kind of person. <laughs> um, anyway, so like uh, I've seen him quite semi frequently through uh, these gatherings of friends, and like I like him and everything. And it's um, basically uh, because he's so like intimate. It was very hard for me to like not develop sort of feelings and. Uh, I've, I've got a crush on him, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and there was this, this weekend was the first time that uh, we did something just the two of us. Like, the rest of the group wasn't involved. And I was like, okay, perfect. Like, let's see what's going on here. Like, because it was just two of us. We went to see a movie. Uh, and then afterwards, we, like, hung out. And it was a completely different mood. Like, there was none of that tactileness no like li like literally nothing it was like 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 there was a big chasm between us like i'm sat next to him in the cinema and it's like there's like a big chasm there because he's huh. not even he's not like displaying uh i mean for example we went to see jurassic park as a group and he was like lying on my shoulder and i'm like okay uh we go to see a movie the two of us doesn't do anything we even mm -hmm. go back to my place and hang out doesn't do anything and i'm like Right, okay, uh, that's a bit of a bummer. And the, the question I want to ask is, because we're in this big group chat, and he's in there, and I get like, I'm finding it hard to be in the group chat because they're all talking like mates, and you know, they're talking uh, about guys they're, they're attracted to and all this sort of stuff. And I just find it, my instinct today was to like remove myself from the group, but it's like a bit dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, because um, I'm finding it. Yeah, I'm finding it. So, like, the question, the question is, how would you deal with someone like, if he's trying to be like intimate towards me in the future? How would you, in a like nice way, sort of go, oh, okay, like, because I can't be dealing with that like every time I'm in that friends group because it's like fucks with my head basically. Um, totally. So it's like that question, and how would you handle being in a group of friends where? you've got these feelings and you you don't want to be dealing with that but you also don't want to be like removing yourself from the group and stuff i don't know it's uh it's hard to express what i'm uh i'm trying not to be dramatic basically <laughs> totally 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 i absolutely hear where you're coming from yeah. so you're you're in a group of friends there's a new person in the group who's very flirty in a group setting and it's made you think like hey, is this person into me maybe i'm into them you kind of went on a friend date and they were very cold and now you're like well this sucks yeah i think i like this person and i don't know how to interact in the group dynamic anymore yeah don't get me wrong like it was a perfectly great and fun day or whatever but i was very conscious that it was different. You see what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just based on what you've told us, it sounds like this might be the type of person who is very flirty. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I get the impression that the group setting makes them feel safe. Like, oh, I can flirt with everybody here because obviously this isn't a date. You know, we're right. all just hanging out. And it, and it frees them up to be very, yeah, like all over everybody or maybe just you. <laughs> and then when you tell me that when you guys hang out by just the two of you, he acts different. You know, again, I feel like maybe they're just flirty in a group setting. But one-on-one, -on -one, they have the forethought 
to think, you know, I don't want to flirt with Steve <laughs> right now because then Steve's going to think I'm into him. Right. You know? It could be like flirting for attention. Yeah. Because I know it's like a high school girl thing. Like high school girls do that all the time. <laughs> high school girls and beyond. Well, I mean, yeah, I was in, into my mid 20s and I had a friends group and there was this one girl who would always like. I've been in your situation. She'd come and she'd like eh, squeeze my shoulders and she'd be like, now you give me a back rub. Eh, we're like at the bar. She's like hanging what? out on me. And I was like, you have a boyfriend. She's like, he doesn't care. Eh. And I'd be like, this is like, I don't know if you're Please in don't. me or what's going on. But then, yeah, when we'd hang out alone or just in a not party situation, it's normal. T- totally different. Yeah. And that's when I realized like, oh, yeah. this is just this type of girl. Yeah. This person, this girl is this type of person where she's just extremely flirty. You know, uh, I don't know. Is it, is alcohol a factor or anything like that? When you guys are in a group, is it, are you guys like drinking or is he just, is he that touchy feely at all times? He's like, yeah, he's just like that all times. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and, you know, and this is like the other thing that you said as well. I mean, like at one point, like at several points, we're like a group of us are just like uh, in a hot tub, and he's like literally squeezing my leg and things like that. Like, it's like over when I yeah when I say like touchy feely, it's like yeah. yeah, I'm I'm not used to like uh, people like being that way. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very odd, and it's like how do you approach? Um, going oh like don't do that without making it uh because if like if he continues to do that it's gonna make it very hard for me to be around like around a person well we- let me ask you yeah. something steve let me let me dive into the psyche of steve <laughs> oh, no. that's a scary place <laughs> i know why do you want why do you feel compelled to stop this person from flirting with you uh because it's bullshit and I, I'm a very straightforward person. It's like, uh, like you're either into me or you're not. If you're not into me, like don't do this because I don't know. It's like, am I boosting your ego by like reacting to you, you know, being flirty with me? Like I can't. I I just think it's like pathetic, and I can't really stand it. <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Yeah, so like- are you kind of the type of person who operates in like black and white, you know, either be into me or not be into me. And yeah. this person is kind of like a gray area type of person and it's driving you nuts. Well, I mean, it, it was a gray area until, yeah, until we hung out one on one and I was like, oh, so that's pretty, that's the answer, right? You know, cause like before I'd be like, what's going on? And then I don't know. I, I feel like Saturday was my answer. Yeah. Um, and it's like I can't continue. It's going to be hard enough me being in that group anyway. Like especially at the moment. Like I don't know. There's like a WhatsApp chat going, and they're all like talking about guys they want to fuck, and I'm like, I don't want to be here right now. Like I can't. But I also don't want to like. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, I can't hang out with you. I, like, I don't want to start like going like that. I can't hang out with a group and being all like, that's my, my instinct is to like remove myself for a while and like not hang out with them. But um, it's not exactly healthy, but. Okay, I think, I've, I, think I have some advice for you then. Okay. Is there a way for you, because it sounds like you are very in tune with yourself and you know yourself Ooh. very well. I know what I want. That's yeah. What I don't want. That's and, good. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, the there's a gap here between what this friendship is, is providing and what you need for yourself as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, you're feeling compelled to kind of remove yourself from the group. Is there a way for you to subtly remove yourself from the group like maybe you can do these things but not announce it to the group that way you avoid any perception of drama but just you know you kind of they invite you out and you say hey i'm I'm busy tonight but you guys have fun and that way you're not involved but there's not any of this well what's going on with steve like is he (laughs) upset it's like no he's busy like it's it's fine don't don't remove yourself from the group completely just separate a little bit mm-hmm. yeah i'm just but saying he, is there a way for you to do what you need to do to make yourself comfortable but do it in a low-key 
subtle way to where people aren't, you know, thinking something dramatic is going yeah, on. Yeah, like, oh my God, he doesn't like us, or oh my God, who fucked <laughs> up here? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can do that. It's just if I when I, so, so when I am physically with them the next time, and he's like being this way, how can you like sort of in a without drawing attention to the fact that it's a problem, <laughs> sort of be like, oh, don't don't do that kind of. Yeah, well, I think that. First of all, just put it in your head. This person is a flirt. They're a flirt. Anything they do with with you, you know, <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that they are have interested. Feelings. Yeah, that they have feelings for you, or that they're super attracted to you. They're just a flirt. So me, I would go into that situation just knowing that. Like if this person is going to flirt with me, I'm not going to let it mean anything to me. I'm going to be very detached emotionally yeah, from it. Yeah, just laugh it off. Sometimes it's fun to be, you have somebody flirting with you. That's why I'm asking, like... It yeah. makes you look, like, more desirable to the group, too. Yeah, is it... Like, oh, I want to flirt with Steve. Is it such a problem <laughs> to have some some cute guy flirting with you, even though he doesn't want to be with you? I mean, is there... I feel like you could still get some sort of enjoyment out of it. It has to be flattering I mean, on, on some level. I, I was... And it's funny because I think people in the group were even observing. They were making like pot shots at like they they knew that something was like going on there. Like um, I think for, for example, they were like saying that oh uh, that we were, we were playing hide hide your dick in the popcorn on Saturday because no because no one else, they were like taking it as like no one else was invited even though like I invited everyone but no one was into coming. Oh <laughs> so, yeah yeah they were saying yeah like they like observed. I think they know that I like this person, so they, they make jokes about it. See, and friends are probably fucking up the situation. Now this guy is like, I'm not playing hide the dick in the popcorn. <laughs> like, in the whole day, he's all, you know, yeah, distant like, and maybe stuff. maybe he was, like, nervous. <laughs> hey, one of the first things one of my friends did, on the day that I met this guy, my friend came over and went, oh, you two are both bombs, it wouldn't work out. <laughs> and walked up. Your friends are sabotaging you. <laughs> exactly. They're they're putting all this extra pressure on. Yeah. That's why you need to be extra cool about the whole situation. Yeah. And you know, just just think to yourself, like, this person's gonna flirt with me, but I'm not gonna let it mean anything to me. That makes people look desirable, you know? That's when, what I said. You're absolutely right. Everybody's gonna be like, wow. Like, even though I'm crumbling inside. Even though you're crumbling inside. Nobody could tell from the outside. So your outside exterior is just, you know, calm, collected. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm not, you know, just just don't let yourself fall for the trap, no. basically. Enjoy the flirting, but don't get wrapped up in all of the extra thoughts and feelings that come with it. Are you, like, reciprocating the flirting at all? Yeah, well. Maybe don't do well, that and maybe he'll stop. No, I was when I thought it was real. Right. No, totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now I don't want to do that. So. Right. I gather that you're not a very flirty person to begin with. <laughs> That's why I asked to begin with. And this guy's flirting with you and you're like, okay, I'm going to go out of my comfort zone and flirt back. Yeah. And it wasn't reciprocated. So now it's like, hey, fucker, <laughs> yeah. this isn't even the type of person I am. And you're making me change the type of person I am. And I... I could see why you would get so upset about being in this situation. Totally. I think you should just return to being true to Steve, the non-flirty Steve. That's the Steve that this person started <laughs> flirting with to begin with. Steve. The what? That's the attractive Steve. Yes. Yeah, don't flirt with anyone. That was like this. Th all right. Think about this. When you weren't flirting with anybody, that's when everybody started flirting with you. The second you started flirting back, suddenly it's this cold, distant chasm movie date. Yeah. Go back to being, <laughs> go back to being the Steve that everybody wants to flirt with. Yeah. Be yourself. Just be oh, the okay. non-flirty Steve, and don't don't let yourself get tricked into thinking this person likes you. Make them prove that they really like you. Okay. Before oh, and do that how? <laughs> well. You know, I feel like when somebody is flirting with you, sometimes it's just I like to flirt, and then sometimes it's like I really want to get a reaction out of you, yeah. and and you know it'll be obvious when they are like trying to get a reaction <laughs> out of you, and then maybe you can bring up everything you've brought up to us, which is 
and I don't, I don't know how this conversation would go, but let's say for example, like you guys are all hanging out in a group. This person's flirting with you. They're all over you, but you're just regular Steve, not yeah. reciprocating. And maybe it's starting to annoy this person and they're like getting more aggressive <laughs> with their flirting and you're just not reciprocating. And then they say like, what's going on? You know, like I thought, do you not like this? Then that's the perfect time to have this conversation yeah. about like, well, I don't know. Like I had a crush on you, but then we went out on this movie date and you were so distant that I just figured you're just a flirt. Yeah. And then, you know, it'll either go one of two ways. They'll say like, yep, you're right. You pinned me down. Or they'll say like, no, blah, blah, blah. Here's the reason I was so distant on that movie date, you know, and all the feelings will come out. But basically yeah. play your cards close to the chest. Don't reveal anything. Draw them out. Okay. Let them flirt and expose themselves and express themselves to the point where they, you know, they can't stop thinking about Steve. Yeah. Man, I'm trying everything to get Steve's attention. It's not working. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that would just make you feel better about the situation. You wouldn't feel all these, you know, like mixed up confused feelings. You know, you're very confident in the fact that they're just flirting with you and and maybe things will change, but but hopefully, you know, you won't get upset about it when when the feelings aren't reciprocated. Yeah. Yeah, I think your microphone just cut out. <laughs> oh, did it? Oh, there it is. It's back on. It's okay now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I said, uh, okay, I'll go back to being the Steve that you all know and just being like. The most attractive <laughs> Steve. You know, the one that we can't help but rub the belly and put our head on. <laughs> <laughs> just hey I feel like it's I feel like I'm whining it's annoying sorry I don't think you're whining it didn't come off as whiny at all no it's a lot of mixed signals that are really shit yeah, to deal it's with a lot of, like mixed emotions and not knowing like trying not to do something stupid and just yeah I don't know, like, that is the yeah. game of romance you are crumbling and mixed up and burning up on the inside but on the outside nobody knows yeah you're just a cool guy who goes with the flow. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for the advice. Yeah. Hope it helps. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated. Yeah. Keep us in the loop. We'd love to hear any uh, progress on this situation. Yeah. The next time I call in, I'll my makeup will be will be running and I'll be like weeping. We'll look forward to Hope it. Not. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks bye, for the call. Bye. Catch you later. See ya. Bye. Okay, everybody. We have another email here. This is an anonymous email and it reads, Hi, this is going to be a question. I have an addiction to pornography. A few months ago, I realized it was actually a problem. I almost think I feel the same way an alcoholic would feel about drinking. I've tried to stop multiple times. I've even made it over 10 days before with no porn. It was probably the longest I've gone without it in over 14 years. Oh. That's the longest I've gone without it in 14 years. Full disclosure, <laughs> probably TMI. Meg, cut this out when you edit this later. Yeah? No, I'm, just, I'm an open book, you know. Uh, let me get back to this email here before I <laughs> bury, bury myself. <laughs> No. Okay. But I always relapse and I feel horrible. I am engaged and have been with somebody for almost four years. I tried to talk to them about it once and they weren't necessarily mad, but they seemed very hurt and cried. Oh, oh no. I haven't brought it up in about two years. Oh, God. But I constantly feel guilt and shame for myself. I had over a hundred gigs of prawn and he literally wrote prawn. prawn. Might, might be a misspelling, but I had over a hundred gigs of prawn on my PC that I just deleted about a month ago. And sometimes I regret it. I just feel like pornography is a shadow looming over me at all times. I don't know what to do. Thanks. Anonymous. Okay. Well, what should... <laughs> prawn addiction. <laughs> Well, think about all the Steam games you could get with that freed up 100 gigs. Yeah. Replace your porn addiction with a video game addiction. I didn't know people actually downloaded porn. Oh, yeah. Aside from, like, 
I Lime feel like wire days. Yeah, it was a more back in the day thing. You got that like vintage Lime Wire porn. You get that old fashioned black and white pornography. Uh, okay. So when I was growing up, everybody I knew had the secret pornography folder on their computer. I knew a lot of guys. Yeah. In fact, I didn't know any girls. Uh, do girls do that? I don't know. Maybe. I don't, maybe. I'm, I don't know. Yeah. There's girls out there that do it, but probably not as many. I feel as, like, okay. Uh -huh. I feel like everybody watches porn. Yeah, for the most part. Not okay. But I like, don't know how I don't know how many download it. Ninety <laughs> percent of the population. Well, in today's era You don't have to. You know yeah, it's streaming services. It's all available online. So to our anonymous emailer, the fact that you deleted a hundred gigs of porn is probably not going to do anything because yeah. there's way more than that available <laughs> on the internet yeah. at all times. Yeah. Um Okay, but let's get to the issue at hand. Enough about all the side stuff. <laughs> this person has a fiance. Oh. Man. And and he thinks he's addicted to porn. Now, from the email, I didn't get any details that said porn addiction, but I believe you when you say you have a porn addiction. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I feel like addiction is when it starts interrupting your regular life, mm -hmm. when you're blowing off other things and responsibilities because you're too busy feeding your addiction. Yeah. Um, so I wish I had more details about like, yo, I, I skipped three days of work to watch porn <laughs> nonstop. No. Um, yeah, or if it's like fucking with your love life, obviously. Yeah, which I don't, I don't know if it is. It's not clear from the email. Right. I'm going back to the email here because I'm even trying to just pull out a question. Like, <laughs> I mean, because obviously the number one answer for anything that you're addicted to is seek help. Yeah, it says, okay, so the question is, I feel like porn is a shadow looming over me and okay. I don't know what to do. Okay. Um... I still stick with that same answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have an addiction, uh, try to seek out help. I would, you know, there's plenty of people who do suffer from porn addiction, from sexual uh, addictions, yeah. from even just like compulsive mm -hmm. gaming addiction, internet addiction. Like they're just addicted to a computer. It's not necessarily pornography, but, right. you know, a lot of people struggle with a lot of things out there and there are people who are trained to help you overcome this. Right. Um, the fact that you talked about it with your fiance and she cried and was very hurt right. is, I feel like that's strange. And I wonder what, what's the details of that conversation that led her to feel that way? Yeah. Because you say that you're dealing with an addiction. When you tell me your fiance was hurt and she cried, that makes it seem like she took it personal. You know, like she felt, maybe I'm assuming that she thought that like she wasn't good enough. Yeah, that's like why you're watching porn. The porn was replacing her and it made her feel inadequate or some way. And really, this situation has very little to do with her. Right. Your fiance. Especially because uh, it's been going on for, what, 14 years? Yeah, I think your fiance needs to realize that whether you're engaged to her or somebody else, it's irrelevant because this has nothing to do with the person you're dating. It's no. your addiction to uh, pornography. So I would... I think it's okay to have another conversation with her about it. Tell her that you deleted all the porn. Yeah, honestly. And I would tell her too, like the last time I brought this up, you were really upset. And so I haven't brought it up again, but it's still an issue to me. And I want to talk about it with you because. Yeah. Cause you kind of need a support structure too, when you're getting over addiction. Yeah. And she needs to know, like I said, this isn't about her. This is about you and she should be there to help you out. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's my advice. Talk to your fiance about it again and really emphasize that this is a personal struggle that you're going through and it doesn't reflect on her in any way. Yeah. Uh, and I would try to seek out some help if you really feel like it's interrupting with your life and your day-to-day -day, uh, comings and goings. Yeah. Anything else to add to that? I think that's pretty much it. That's the best thing that you could do in this situation. You know, just watch more Mega64 videos too. And maybe you can just go from one addiction to another one. It's a little bit more socially acceptable. Maybe. Just want to throw out a plug for my other show <laughs> that I do, Mega64. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your email and good luck. Good luck. <laughs>
All right, everybody, that's gonna bring us to the end of Heart Slayers. Big thank you to everybody who watches us, leaves comments on YouTube, and supports us on the Mega64 Patreon. For just $1, you get to see all of these episodes a whole week early. Hey, if you want us to answer your email, email us at heartslayers at mega64.com. Okay. If you like this show and you wanna support this show and see us grow, the best thing you can do is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We've hit up all the social medias uh, in the interest that we can help spread the word about this show. We're trying to get more people to watch it. By you liking all those pages and supporting us on social media, you just helps boost the signal and spread Heart Slayers yeah. to, to everybody you know. It really helps us out. So please, if you want to support us, go there. We appreciate it. If you want to follow us, and see what's going on in our lives, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at Gustafo. And I am at Furnace Woods. Yes. And like I mentioned, we have a new Heart Slayers Twitter, at Heart Slayers. Yes. We will be back in two weeks taking more calls at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We're doing it every two weeks. So we hope you join us again next time. Until then, thank you for watching. We are the Heart Slayers, Derek and Meg. See ya.